This is a response to Yes I Am a Wizard Johnny's video, Apollo Moon Landing Hoax, The Case of the Missing Tracks, Follow Up. Wizard, I guess I can call you that. Your first video was roundly criticized and many of your claims debunked. This is to be expected since, one, the moon missions were real, and two, these hoax claims have been getting debunked for the last 30 years or more but you removed that video along with all the comments and made this second one in order to fix some of the problems. In this second video you state, Evidently, my previous video wasn't enough to convince some nitpicky propagandists who constantly refer to character assassination, misrepresentation, and taking my claims out of context. I think somebody's been watching too many of Gerald White's videos. Well, I don't agree with those claims you just made, but now that that video is gone, it will be difficult for others to judge for themselves, won't it? Apparently, you've tried to fix some of the problems that people pointed out, but you were unable to fix the main problem, that you are wrong about the Apollo program being faked. I'll deal with only one of your errors in order to keep this short. Your main theme in these videos has been the irregular appearance of the rover tracks. Sometimes they can't be seen at all. You gave a mathematical illustration to show why the rover tracks should be seven times deeper than the astronauts' boot prints. As stated before, astronauts on the lunar surface, according to NASA, weighed approximately 66.9 pounds. For the second time, I'll say this again. The lunar rover on the lunar surface weighed 463 pounds and was designed to carry a payload of 1,080 pounds extra. I'm going to assume you just made a mistake here, rather than using incorrect numbers to make your math come out the way you wanted it to. You gave the Earth weight of the rover. On the moon, it weighed about 80 pounds. With the astronauts in it, somewhere around 200 to 220 pounds. Now, let's check out your calculations. Doing the simple calculations, we can divide the weight of the lunar rover by the weight of the astronauts, and voila, you have the depth of the tra tire tracks that the lunar rover should have made. You have spent too much time watching Jarrah's videos. Math is not just a matter of putting numbers and operations into a hat, stirring them up, and then seeing what comes out. This was something I spent considerable effort trying to teach my students for 30 years. I will try to explain what numbers to use and how they should be handled. Math music, please. First, you have to have the correct values. The weight you gave for the rover is its Earth weight. And you compared that to the astronaut's lunar weight. I have learned, after completing most of this video, that Blister Hiker just told you the same thing in a comment, which you promptly removed from your comment section. When he asked you why you removed it, your answer was that it was incorrect. Anyway, not only do you need to consider the correct weights, but you also have to think about the area of the weight-bearing surfaces. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that the area of the sole of the astronaut's boots is about the same as the tire area which is against the surface of the moon. And let's take the weight of the rover fully loaded with two astronauts to be somewhere between 195 to 215 pounds. When you divide 215 by 4, you get about 54 pounds per tire. And that's the maximum that they can be. It is considerably less also with only one astronaut. Now, when a person walks, they bear their full weight on each foot at one point during the step. The astronaut's full weight was 67 pounds. So the astronauts are actually applying more pressure per square inch on the surface than the rover tires are. You added this. The lunar regolith that covers the surface of the moon is very, very deep, and therefore, 
One footprint or one tire track would not be enough to compress the lunar regolith all the way down to bedrock. The bedrock is several meters below the surface, but just under the top couple of inches, the regolith was very firm in many places. They had to hammer the flagpoles in, and the films of them drilling core samples showed them running into considerable resistance at a shallow depth. In closing, I would like to comment on your comments to your revised video. Getting on YouTube and pretending to be a big shot thinking you can throw your weight around might be fun, but Blister Hiker is over three times your age and has a master's equivalency in electrical engineering. This hardly justifies you calling him a child, especially when he is absolutely correct and you are absolutely wrong. As for your defense of your integrity, no, that's not lying, but removing a video and all the comments and then making false claims about them to save face is lying. Removing Blister Hiker's comments showing your error in the rover weight is about as dishonest as it gets. In that video you took down, you also said you would accept my video response. At the time, and when I started this, I was intending to be very friendly, but it appears by some of the comments you've been making that polite exchange of ideas is not something that you consider important. I'm hoping you will realize that you're at a stage in your life where you should still be learning, not teaching.